What's up guys, OBS 27 is now available to download. There's some amazing new features. Plus, I'm gonna catch you up to date on the best features from OBS 24, 25, and 26 in case you haven't been staying up to date. Let's do it. All this and more coming up next. So real quick, before we start, only about 10% of our viewers are subscribed to our channel. It's totally free. Hit that red subscribe button because we've got a lot of great new videos coming out. All right, let's keep going. All right, so first of all, how do we get OBS 27? Literally, just Google OBS 27, click the very first link there, and keep in mind this is a release candidate. So that means that it's still a little bit in beta, but it's everyone's saying that it's super secure and reliable. I've been using it for a while here. Scroll down to the bottom of this GitHub. You can download it for Mac, PC, or Windows. I'm going to go ahead and download this for Windows. You get it real quick. Click the little button down there and install it. This is for Windows. I'm also going to take you guys through the new Mac version because those Mac users out there are going to get some great new features for controlling OBS. Let's check it out. All right, so I also wanted to update you guys on the past couple OBS releases to get you guys up to speed. Going all the way back to like OBS 20 is when we got that studio mode so you can have your preview and output. I'm not gonna go over everything, but going back to OBS 24, we got dynamic bitrate streaming, which has helped so many of you guys, and myself included, reduce drop frames by allowing OBS to manage the bitrate dynamically based on how much internet bandwidth you have available. That was huge. And in OBS 24, we also got those custom browser docs, which are finally coming to Mac as well. In OBS 25, we got scene collections, which is really huge. And that, of course, allows us to uh, save all of our scenes into an entire collection and have multiple different OBS setups, which I use all the time. We also got SRT outputs. That's not super huge, but SRT, Secure Reliable Transport, is becoming more popular, so it is available in OBS. We got a T-bar for managing transitions from preview and output with a nice little uh, alpha channel. Stingers in OBS 25, a volume lock, a source list with icons now. So the whole UI is looking a lot better with icons and the ability to change kind of the way that you see the scenes as, uh, in a list or in buttons. In OBS 26, we also got uh, virtual camera support. So we can now output the video inside of OBS over to Zoom. And I know a lot of you guys have seen our videos doing that. We have a source toolbar and media playback. I actually know Todd Conley, who is the contributor who helped get that cool little media scrub bar inside of OBS. Thank you, Todd. Of course, so many people have uh, supported this project. AI noise suppression. We got screenshot ca capabilities and the movable doc UI. So that's getting us up to now. Now let's look at OBS 27. All right, now let's take a look at some of these new features. So the first one here, let's get out of studio mode, is an undo feature that's just so cool. So as you guys probably know, the lock feature down here allows you to lock the place of the source so it can't be moved. But in case you bump something, you move something, there's this new undo feature. And you can literally just click Control Z as many times as you want to get things back to where it was. So undo and redo. So control Z and control shift Z to go backwards in time. I think that's just so cool. Probably the number one requested feature is an undo. Think about undo is in everything, right? It's in Word, it's in Excel, it's in PowerPoint. All the applications that we really love and use often have undo. Now OBS has it too. Now the next really cool feature for those of us who are like newer to OBS or just getting started is a missing files feature. So if you've opened up OBS and some of your files have moved, it will notify you and allow you to select the new files. So such a cool new feature. I'm so glad they have this. It's just a really easy way to replace any files that may have been moved if you have a more complicated setup 
this is a really good one. Now, my next favorite is some really awesome new scene transition options. So let me show you how I'm thinking about using this one. So every scene in here has the ability to have its own transition override. So as you switch between scenes, you can now have, there, there's a swipe, for example, or we could do like a Luma wipe. So different types of scene transitions as they go, but even more importantly, we can now do transitions on the hide and show features, which allows OBS to essentially have an unlimited number of overlays with unique channel transitions or transitions on each overlay. So let me show you what I mean. So each of these has a transition here. So when you click the actual source, you can uh, set a show and a hide transition. Now the transitions, of course, are set up over here in the transitions area. So if you want to add a new one, for example, let's say we have like a special one, you're going to see tons of new transition effects over here. So let's just take a look at like barn door top left. Uh, there's a ton of these. I really like them. Let's take a look at one that might work well for like a news show, which I'm going to show you. Here's some really cool circles. Why don't we do that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the scene transitions here. And I'm actually going to call it a circles uh, so that it, it's easy for me to remember. We're going to go over here and check circles. Click preview. Click OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add circles as my show transition. So it will actually show up as a Luma wipe here, circles, okay. And then when I show this, it actually shows up in that transition. So this is a really cool way. I don't know if you've seen like John Oliver's show, but he has like these sidebars. So we've got this kind of sidebar here, a square of information. And then boom, another square of information. So really cool way to do animations inside of your streams. Now, the next big one here is virtual camera. You know, you guys all know that came out in OBS 26. We've got the start and stop virtual camera, but we also have a control for starting and stopping virtual cameras in the system tray. So for those of you who run OBS at startup, and you want to start and start the virtual camera directly from the systems tray. That's a big one. And then there are a couple other things, including RTX voice, which is really cool. I don't have an RTX compatible graphics card, so I'm not able to show that one off today. And uh, there's some really great track Mac stingers that didn't have time to show today. It's really cool. I'll just quickly show you where you can play with that in the stingers transition here there is a new track mat area and what that allows you to do is to actually set up a entire mat that basically it, it's really really cool but i i haven't had the time to dig into it if you want to see what the track mat does and everything there's some great videos on it but also i can create a video on it if there's enough interest it's just going to take a lot of time it allows you to do these like really cool stingers that follow a second video file to know so that OBS can actually reveal and hide different layers as you do the stinger transitions. If you want to see a video on it, it's going to take me a couple hours. Let me know in the comments below because I will do it. If you. All right, so Mac users, I got my Mac Mini set up here, We're ready to show off the new Mac updates. Two big things: browser docs. And those docs allow you to dock things on your UI so that you can see a chat room, so that you can control cameras. I'm going to show that to you in a moment. And then NDI is uh, getting some big hardware decoding for video. This applies to H.264 and H.265 video, which is actually inside of a lot of NDI sources, especially NDI HX. So let's take a look at it. Here we go. All right, so last but certainly not least, wanted to show off some of the new Mac features for OBS 27. Let me go ahead and add an NDI video source into my setup here. And as you can see, uh, the video is coming right in and I wanna show the new browser docs. And so what I'm gonna do 
So I'm going to open up one of the new OBS PTZ controllers. I'm going to copy the URL for that file, and I'm going to pop it into the custom browser docs. And essentially, you give the doc a name, you paste in the URL, click apply, and as soon as you close that window, the new browser docs are available. Now you can pull these into all these different areas of the UI inside of your OBS setup. And once you've done that, you can kind of move it around a little. And I'm gonna go ahead and just load the camera into here real quick. And as you can see, I can control the camera um, using the PTZ controls in this PTZ uh, controller from PTZ Optics. So pretty cool. That's just one way to use the browser docs. A lot of people like to use this to embed like a chat room and there's lots of ways to do it, but just wanted to show this uh, quick little way of doing that. Also, there's the hardware acceleration that's available on most IP video sources, uh, H.264, H.265. You can see that coming up in this NDI camera settings. It will also come up for RTSP and other video streams. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, everybody. You won't become a video production expert overnight, so subscribe to the Stream Geeks. I have a book, by the way. It's called The Unofficial Guide to Open Broadcaster Software. You guys can download for free at the link below, plus you can pick up a copy on Amazon. I'm in the process of updating this to include all these new updates. You guys got it first here on YouTube and Facebook. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye.